Consumers want natural. You want affordable and effective. Everyone wins when you breed with Afimel heat detection. Reliable heat-based breeding for high preg rates. That's the power of Afimel. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Dairy Magazine, reporting to you here today with uh, Tiffany Lamandola uh, from Ever Ag. If you're familiar with her name, uh, she does a great job at providing regular reports on milk prices in the dairy industry. She's based in California. I noticed uh, recently with some of our dairy trends, we've had some milk prices uh, go up, you know, for the month of October, while cheese, on the other hand, took quite a dip. Can you tell us what's the scoop on why? Yeah, absolutely. Cheese has been on its own roller coaster this year. So not to take folks back to a bad time, but back in May and June, you'll recall, we had cheese prices dip into the 130s, 140s. That was a result of, you know, we, we had plenty of milk production at the time. Demand was so-so, but in particular, we had lost some of our export business. And so the markets really took a dive and but in doing so, we were able to become competitive again in the world markets. And so we started hearing slowly of some of those exports being booked. But they weren't exports far out. They were exports for the next month or two. They weren't able to book them out six and 12 months, unfortunately. So when those exports started rolling, that combined with some heat that hit the Midwest, it really kind of tightened up that fresh cheese market. And we shot cheese back up to almost $2. And so those were really great months. But what do you do when you shoot cheese back up to $2? Well, you cut off your export competitiveness again. And so then we started losing sales. And once those one or two months that had been booked started rolling off, we then found ourselves with a little bit more cheese available here in the US. Hot weather passed, no more weather events. We are a little shorter on milk, but typically when the milk gets shorter in the U.S., it's the balancing plants that lose the, the milk first, and those are not typically cheese plants. It's typically butter and powder plants, and so that's what's led to those markets tightening up. So when you say some prices have increased, it's been butter and nonfat have benefited um, by a little less production, particularly here in California, while the cheese plants have generally remain getting most of what they want and we've lost exports again. So I think what we are now doing is recalibrating in the market. I don't think we need to go back to 130 or 140 cheese to, to win some of those exports back. I think we're probably doing that right now at these levels, um, but it's just going to take some time. Uh, we're also in the good holiday demand time period. Cheese usually gets some support from that. We're not feeling a ton of that. You know, consumers are constrained right now. They're being careful on that extra block of specialty cheese. So we're ha we have some headwinds that we're working against, but um, I, I suspect we'll level back out here. Um, but I don't know that we have $2 cheese um, in our close-in viewpoint at this point. Yeah, you're right. It's been quite a roller coaster. I, yeah. I, I feel like we had record high prices at some point. Was that last year? I mean, just just as soon as uh, you know, August, we were close closer to two dollar cheese. So I mean, that's not record high, but that's pretty nice. And then it tanked, you Absolutely. know, like I said earlier this year. So yeah. it's pretty crazy. It's been very volatile, and that makes it really hard to you know, as far as decision makers to to get product where it needs to go. Could you say as far as like how much of California milk goes into cheese? Yeah, on, we, you know, uh, roughly. Yeah, we, I mean, it's hard to know now that we're in the federal order a little bit what, what the utilization is, but we f figure at least 40 to maybe 50 percent is sort of class three based milk, maybe not necessarily into cheese, right. but the class three price influences that. Um, so that changes obviously month to month, but yeah, it's made it difficult, particularly for dairy producers, right? They've had their margins kind of go all over the place and put costs have stayed pretty high. Um, and so that's obviously where risk management comes into play. Um, putting a floor up underneath those milk prices for these kind of crazy volatile times is pretty important. Right. And you did put together a great seminar today here in Tulare with Everag. Yep. So thank you for putting this all together and yeah. great to meet with you here today and thank you for the update read more about these things in california dairy magazine i'm matthew malcolm california agnet.com